We're sitting here today with Phil Oaks. Well, that was pretty self-explanatory. We're sitting here today with Phil Oaks, right? Hello, Phil. How are you? Uh, okay. <laughs> you just flew in from L.A. Yep. last night? Flew in from Los Angeles on American Airlines. And came to Detroit for a uh, benefit for the Winter Soldiers investigation. Yeah, and then another benefit for um, the Pan White Panthers, Sinclair, Sunday night. Good. And it's what? the first time I've sung in, in three months or so, so I'm, I hope I remember the words. That's why the book's here, right? Yeah. You said this changed the whole style of well, <laughs> song books? Uh, this, this was the first... Uh, I, I think it helped move it along. Before, before this book came out, most song books were like uh, nine songs and piano chords and, uh, uh, and very little copy of any. And it's just a color picture of, of the star on the cover. And just, we, we, we had a backlog of songs, so we were saving up to do a spectacular book. So we got a lot of photographs and drawings by, by Heinrich Clay, an old German artist, and uh, some French nudes, and, uh, <coughs> and poetry and articles I'd written about. Ron Cobb. Yeah, some drawings by Ron Cobb that aren't cartoons that, that he had sitting around his house. And um, put it together into that book. And then it, right after that, then, uh, then Tim Harden had the exact same thing out. And, and uh, Judy Collins put another kind of book out, but you know, but it was a book. It was uh, something more than just songs. Something and more than chords, just songs, right? Yeah. It was a concept almost. Yeah. Something to read. Yeah. Yeah. Something to read while you're sitting on the. Yep, you can read it there too. <laughs> so the war is over, Phillips. You haven't been singing for three months. Have you been writing? I've been trying to write. I haven't succeeded. I'm in a dry spell. I'm so I'm just waiting until my new songs come out. Do they just pop out? Yeah, they usually come out of my subconscious, and I'm walking down the street or having a conversation, and suddenly they come out. And uh, but lately they haven't. Huh? Is so it Los Angeles, or is it? Uh... It could be Los Angeles. It's possible. I've, I've, I wrote my I wrote the, the greatest hits album and the rehearsals for retirement. Uh, I wrote uh, in Los Angeles with the same kind of pattern, except it didn't take so long, it, which was like a, a long, dry spell. And suddenly, in a two-week period, a whole bunch of songs came out together, and and. Uh, that happened twice, and it didn't happen this time. So I, I bought myself a new piano, and I'm hoping <laughs> the new piano will, will produce <laughs> something. It's been a while since we've had anything from you in the way of a record. You yeah, it's been a year. You cut a record they never released. Oh, yeah, and I had one record that I, I made a rock and roll record uh, <laughs> uh, of a, a Carnegie Hall concert I gave where I was really drunk and crazy, and I sang Elvis Presley and Buddy Holly and uh, Merle Haggard and uh, some of my own songs jazzed up and wore a gold lame suit. Some yeah. pictures I've seen Yeah, the gold lame suit. And uh, the fans were upset. And then, then the company, A&M, became upset because the fans were upset. And they were worried that my career was ruined, <clears throat> which is probably true. And um, <laughs> so then, so I, I put the get this record together. It was called Gunfight at Carnegie Hall. And, uh, <laughs> and they, just, they just refused to release it. So it's just sitting in the cans in L.A. <clears throat> and and which left me stuck without any, any new song, so I'm, I'm overcoming that dilemma now. I hope. You've been watching movies lately. Yeah, I'm spending more and more time at the movies, just uh, escaping. And <laughs> you think movies? I, a lot of the things you have written, I think, would be. Uh, you have the imagery there, for the uh, picture. It's just that you've been always doing it in poetry and song. Yeah, I've always I've always been mostly interested in movies, and uh, I've usually gone about four times a week all my life, uh, mostly, and. Uh, so, some of the songs, uh, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, come directly from movies. Like there was a 1941 John Ford, John Wayne movie called The Long Voyage Home, based on Eugene O'Neill's plays, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was the basis for Pleasures of the Harbor. That was the song. I've yeah. seen that, where John Wayne plays the Scandinavian. Right. And, you know, and the, the whole thing about... The only time he's ever acted in his life. <laughs> he's really good in that movie. Yeah. No, he, he, I, I like to, I'm a big John Wayne fan, um, <clears throat> from like about 1940 to 1952 with uh, Stagecoach and Red River, it was a fantastic movie. Uh -huh. And and Long Voyage Home and The Quiet Man. And uh, the the trilogy of the cavalry was good. She wore a yellow ribbon in those. Sands of Iwo Jima. <laughs> he, was, he was good. I mean, it's, John, John Wayne, you know, fulfills the, uh, he did fulfill the, the mythic role of, 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 the, of the American he-man hero empire builder. I mean, it was, it was, it, 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 he had, it, it didn't, uh, they didn't. Uh, the, the ideology was very subtle, but but if if you're uh, 
you know, movies are an, are an art form, and, and, and it, films, uh, uh, there's a certain style of American films which I think are, are valid. You know, the, 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 the myth-building film is, is a, I mean, even, just, even like in the next century, you can go back and, and say, well, we'll now show a propaganda movie from, from America in the, in the, in the, in the 40s. And so, 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 so I mean, for example, if you're a capitalist nation at war with the with the fascist nation, you know, and uh, and, and and you want to make films that where you're going to portray the the, the 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 essence of the soldier. I mean, you, it's, it's got to be a guy that can fight, that is tough enough, that, that looks good, and, and has the kind of personality that, that fits with the with the uniform and so forth. And in that context, I mean, suppose it was a communist country making a, a war film, you know. Uh, of how they defended their homeland from the fascist invaders, they'd still, you'd still want to look for a, a John Wayne type, you know, a, 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 uh, the actor who can play the warrior, in, in so in so many words, you know. Well, the revolutionaries ever have a character like that? Yeah, well, the, I think well, the revolution come out, <laughs> trash man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I think the revolutionaries, uh, uh, well, you know, that that they have to develop in, into into a, when, when and if there is a revolution, it, it's it's going to come. Well, I mean, they they, they have them. Uh, in, in a sense, like with Che Guevara, he fulfills that role, um, but not in a fantasy not, level. Not in a fantasy level, but but uh, America has yet to produce uh, a Che Guevara really. And Malcolm X, uh, once again, on a real level, did it and on a mythic level. You know, Dylan was a sort of was was an intellectual revolutionary at the beginning, and so he he fulfilled it also visually. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if the, if the revolution ever becomes a revolutionary war rather than a a word game. Uh, John Wayne's will develop of, of another sort. Has the revolution been a word game, you think, a lot up to this point? Uh, a lot of it's just rhetoric and... It, it's, it's gone... Uh, not, not, no, not completely. Uh, it, it, it goes in stages. I mean, I mean, I think, like, the, this, this fall in schools has been very much a word game because I think everybody's uh, scared to death, you know, and unprepared, so definitely lately it's been a word game. But, but, but all, on, this, on the other hand, it's... Uh, uh, great things have been accomplished. I mean, I, th I think it's fairly safe to say, in, in retrospect, that the large uh, demonstrations uh, did, in fact, help uh, slow down the course of the war, uh, and 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 force the government to to, to move ever so slowly toward a, a possible withdrawal stage. And if they if they hadn't done that, they, they, I think we'd still have a, a half a million men and more. Cambodia, probably in Thailand, yeah, right now, but it would have been really. <laughs> You know, it would have kept up and up and up. Neil Young, two years ago on his birthday, said that you were the inspiration. His artistic inspiration was Phil Oaks. Yeah, he told me that when he when I first went to California. It surprised me. He played me a couple of songs on the Springfield record, and so that I got that from from some song of mine. I forgot what song it was. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear those things. Yeah, I was wondering if you uh, what you thought of Neil Young. I like him. He's great. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> I, no, I do, I do like I do like I do like Neil Young better than uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Mm -hmm. I like, I mean, I, I, on the basis of his new record, the the, the one song's really nice. I, what's it called about love? Uh, only love can break. Only love can break hard. I think it was a classic song. It's really come into his own there, and uh, I like him a lot. Do you have anything to do much anymore with Ruben and Hoffman? Yeah, I, I see him. I, I, I spent a month in Europe with, uh, with Ruben, Jerry Ruben, just uh, this November. Went to uh, France and, and Amsterdam and England and, and Ireland with him. Had a great time. Ireland? Yeah, J Jerry Ruben's one of, one of the world's uh, great tour guides of Europe. It's one of his secret talents. It <laughs> <laughs> hasn't come out in the, and even in the underground media. After the revolution, that's what he should do, I think, is... <laughs> <laughs> Lead tours. Lead tours, yeah. Great. Un underground political tours of Europe. With Jerry uh, Rubin. Yeah. <laughs> Taking you through the... Uh, Ireland would be far out. Yeah. He was, we were both deported from Ireland at different times. You were times. both deported he from Ireland. He was Ireland. deported from Belfast, and I was deported from Dublin. Okay, I went and tell... I'm, every time I go on television, something weird happens. Cause, and uh, putting yourself in the public view is... A dangerous profession, and uh, 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 they threw out Ruben and, and Stu Albert. Uh, for, you know, they're making a lot of radical statements, and and their 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 time had run out in terms of their visa. Mm. But we we had an unlimited time, and um, we went on television. I just sang a song, and uh, and I was with a guy named Brian Flanagan, who's another yippie. And beca and because because of the political storm that, that that Jerry had had started, we got the tail end of it and had to leave. 
we declared undesirable aliens. And we were kicked out of Ireland. Yeah. Now, they, they paid our way back, though. They, they paid our fair. So it's a cheap way to travel. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Europe and then get in trouble with the authorities and get sent back to America on Aer Lingus. Well, I hope everything goes well and you have another uh, flood of great new songs. I hope so. If not, I'm going to just disappear and you'll never see me again. Uh, you make movies or something. I'll, just, I'll make movies. All right. Phil Oaks and Tim Powell and... Um, Thank you. We're good luck. Good luck. Here, good luck here in Detroit, Motor City, USA, home of the honk. home of riots, honk and. <laughs> <laughs>